right, so we're getting ready to install our intake manifold now. And I've gone around and cleaned all the mating surfaces of the intake manifold. You can see I have no old gasket debris, and that's imperative. Um, most people don't really do intake gaskets right. So here's kind of an intake gasket here, and these are the Felpro Printos, Print O seals, or whatever they're called. But they're really nice because you don't have to run any gasket sealer around um, all the intake ports, which is also a good thing because when you do this and a little bit squishes in and you have a little bit in the port, you're really hurting the flow. So this is a pretty good advantage. But naturally, we always are going to run gasket sealer around our water ports on both sides of the gasket. I still believe that's important. But basically, a lot of these are labeled, and this says head side here. So naturally, that would go towards the head. And you'd want to check and make sure it's all lined up and anything you'd need to trim out of them, you'd trim out of them beforehand. But these Felpros are pretty good. So um, we got our intake manifold mating services cleaned up and our services here cleaned up. And we're going to go ahead and get to applying our gasket sealer. And as I said, we're going to go around the... Uh, water ports here on the front and back of the gasket and we're also instead of using the gaskets that they supply us with we're going to run a bead a gasket along the front and back of our intake manifold seats now um, this is pretty highly recommended to do this because uh, generally those gaskets will leak so it's always a better idea to use a good thick bead of sealer and if any is overhanging into the uh, where you stick your distributor down into here you want to wipe that off but so we're going to go ahead and get moving on that now but that's kind of the general background idea of what we're about to do so we'll grab our intake manifold and get these all doped up and we'll get after it okay this here is a perfect example of why I mock everything up before I install it and I always tap out my threads. As you can see here, I couldn't get uh, my intake stud in, and I ran a tap through it, and look at all this crap that was down in that thread. So you want to use a thread chaser and really get in there, but all this garbage right here was in that one thread. So I'm going to go ahead and go through all these and make sure they're good and cleaned out, but... Um, again, that just shows why you want to tap out your threads before you're sitting there with gasket seal on everything and you're fighting the clock and you can't get a bolt in. Then you end up forcing it and breaking it off in there. So you always want to be sure to do stuff like this. Alright, so we're going to go ahead and apply our gasket sealer. So as I mentioned, we're going to lay down a nice and thick bead. And this is how you want to do it with these Fords because um, this creates the best seal and the least chance of leaks. Um, when this gasket sealer dries, it'll expand and it'll create a real good seal. So it'll be perfect. Um, and this is how a lot of people do it. This isn't just specific to me. So you just want to make sure get a good thick coat. You can always wipe off any of the overhanging stuff when you're done so it's better to go on in this one case it's better to go too heavy than too light so you're not going to do any damage by going too heavy so we can always wipe it off okay We got our gaskets here. Now what I like to do is just use my um, gasket applier here, my gasket maker tube itself, and just go around here and lightly press. Get a nice even coat on there. I like to do this on both sides.
And because these are the fell probe gaskets, the print -a seal or whatever they're called, print o seal, um, you don't need to put any gasket seal around the intake ports. And I already explained why that's a pretty nice advantage just for performance reasons if it went to leaking or I mean not went to leaking for performance reasons for the fact that you won't get any gasket sealer overhanging into the port like you see there's some overhanging right there and then when I tighten this down this will squish down now I'm going to wipe my excess off because we don't want to be blocking off the cooling jackets either but you want to make sure that you're good and thorough and you get all around them. So this gasket here says head side, so that'll just mount on the head side of the motor. Now what's nice here is these head gaskets actually have a lip on them right here and that's four putting the intake manifold down and over. So that's really what we're after with that. Nice. Again, we're going to install it with the uh, head side down towards the head. Make sure you have them slipped over this head gasket. That's pretty imperative. Alright, now we're ready to set our intake manifold on. So, easy as she does it. Looks like we got enough sealer in there, so that's good. Now I'm going to go ahead and drop all my washers on here. I uh, mocked all this up as you saw before so I could get the right spacing where these studs would be sticking out the proper distance. So I made sure those were all even in the way I wanted them. Um, before I go too much farther, I'm going to shove some newspaper. Down inside our intake manifolds, you really don't want to drop any, anything down them at this point. So that's always important. You, don't, you really don't want to do anything like that. So... Keep moving along here. You don't want to dawdle too bad. So, We'll tighten them and snug, snug them down in just your typical crisscross pattern. Um, but with the with the intake manifold, you don't start from the center. That will be the last part we torque. So this isn't the exact torque pattern, but it's kind of the idea. I'll post a picture of the torque pattern. So So I'm just going around right now to get it all snug down and ready for torquing. So a quick note here while I'm doing this. Um, aluminum intake manifolds, the torque spec on this bolt size is 25 foot-pounds. But with aluminum intake manifolds like what we have here, um, you know, you kind of run the risk of 
cracking them and breaking them when you torque them down that tight. So what I more like to shoot for is something in the neighborhood of 20 foot pounds. And then after I run the motor, I like to go ahead and recheck those. So that's real nice and easy to do on these Fords because these are straight up and down on the Chevrolets. It's just no fun at all. So Ford definitely has Chevrolet over the barrel with that. But anyway, um, that's kind of what you have to do if you got an aluminum intake, if you want to do it right. So you don't want to crack it. So that's something to be mindful of. Okay, so I'm going to take them to 15 and then to 20. So here we go. Get around here where we can see what we're doing. Fifteen there. Okay, so we got our new valve covers on here, and there really wasn't much to show on how to do that. All I do is uh, um, take my gasket and set it in my cover to make sure I have the right side. And then I take that gasket, it's a cork gasket, you can see it kind of sticking out right here, it has little locator plugs in it. I would take that side that mates up with the cover and coat that one side with gasket sealer and press that against my uh, valve cover and then just run my valve cover down and on and um, there is a torque spec for valve covers but really just don't over tighten them um, just let the gasket do the work and it'll be just fine most people don't torque their valve covers that's just silly so anyway especially with these type of uh, um, valve cover wing bolts or whatever they are so anyway we'll move on to the last thing we're going to show here and then we're pretty much finished out with the build we have plugs and stuff that we need to, to uh, seal up but I mean just some Teflon tape or thread sealer and putting the plug in it and that should be good and that's really all we have left so I'm going to go ahead and show how to put the thermostat on and then that should be it and then we'll, we will have a completed motor ready to uh, drop into something okay so now I'm going to go ahead and install the filler neck here and um, what I've done is taken the thermostat and note that the thermostat here the coiled spring part goes in to the uh, intake manifold so that's real important you don't want to put that in backwards because it's actually reverse from if you look at it the way you would think that it would work but what I've done is the face that's towards the uh, thermostat housing here I coated with gasket sealer because these Fords when you're trying to put them in these have a way of moving around and just sliding down in between when you're uh, tightening it up you'll actually crack your housing so um, I went ahead and let that sit up for a little bit so it's a little tacky but um what I really like about these Mr. Gasket filler necks is not that they're chrome or anything of that nature, which I guess is nice, but they come with an O-ring. So this makes changing your thermostat nice because you can do it multiple times and it generally works out pretty well versus trying just to slide that old school style gasket in there. So, go ahead before we get too excited, make sure our bolts thread in. So we're just going to tighten this down with a good old half inch wrench. I'm sure there's a torque spec here, but with an O-ring, it's not really imperative. You just want to tighten it up until the main surfaces are just about together. So. 
That's really all there is to it. You just want to keep checking periodically, make sure that didn't slide down in between there because if it did then you're gonna bind up and have problems so make sure your thermostat ain't sliding down in there so you just want to make sure that your thermostat isn't or uh, hasn't rather slid, slid down in between your uh, thermostat housing and your intake because if you keep tightening it in that situation something's going to break and knowing the luck of how automotive stuff works it'll be your intake manifold so um, you really want to be mindful of that and just tighten it down and just keep watching as you're tightening if you uh, have a gap and you have a ton of resistance don't force it because uh, Good rule of thumb is if you're forcing anything, there's usually a problem and you're going to break something. So it's really not what you want to do if you can help it. Okay, and that's all it takes. And your water pump is on, or not your water pump, your thermostat housing is on. Again, you want to make sure that hasn't slid down and fallen in between. But pretty much at this point, you're done with your motor build minus the block plugs and installing your distributor and uh, setting your timing and all that but as far as the the build up goes you're uh, you're done so uh, my last few words here my parts that I'd recommend is um, Summit actually makes a really good carburetor with annular boosters um, I'll post a link of that carburetor but it's really nice um, I got one on one of my vehicles and it runs really well. I'm pretty pleased with it for the price. It's only like $250. And then as far as distributors go, um, a really good unit is the Pertronics Igniter 3. And you can buy it as a whole distributor with the ignition module inside the distributor. It's all contained within the distributor. And it's, uh, it's really good. When I put it on one of my vehicles, I actually had to... Uh, put bigger jets on it because it was getting such efficient burn it was almost as if it was lean and uh, it has great power advantages it fires right up when you turn the key um, as opposed to how it really didn't with points and I had my points adjusted correctly but anyway those are two items you want to look into to finishing off your engine but that's pretty much it so there you go budget small block motor so there it is